So here's up in Blue Ridge at a buddy of mine's cabin. Actually, it's a friend of a friend, but now we're all buddies because I helped him get the bees out of the wall. And that's where they're coming in. And this place was sealed up tight except for that one window. And those bees found it. The one place that he forgot to caulk around the window. Hey beekeepers, we're doing a cutout today. I got a buddy that gave me a call yesterday and asked me if I'm doing anything on a Saturday. Can you believe it? So I said, of course not. What would I possibly be doing? <laughs> he said, well, we've got some bees coming in uh, the cabin right next to our window. And so what we think is going on based on the pictures and based on what we've seen from the bees flying, they're coming in, they found a little tiny crack right above the window and there's a, a second floor above us, so we believe they're in the floor joist right here. So what we're going to do is we've got a section of bead board that we're just going to take down, and if it goes as expected, we'll find that uh, colony of bees right inside the floor joist. So that's what we're hoping. We're hoping that it's an easy extraction, not too tall of a ladder necessary for it. And the homeowner thinks that they've only been here maybe three weeks or less. So we're in the very northern part of North Georgia. We're almost to the Tennessee border. So the climate zone is actually a little bit cooler here than it is down where I live. I'm two hours south of here. So that means that they may just begin, or they're just beginning to build up some honey stores in here if they've only been here three weeks. So we're going to open it up and see what we find. Oh, they're right there in between. Oh, there's the pile right there. Look. There yep. they are. Right yep. there. That's yep. the mound of them. Sure enough. Okay. Yeah, and they're fresh. They haven't been in there long. Okay. But they don't want to make it easy. They're chewing through that styrofoam. Do you know what? how how much the distance there is between here? That's what that white stuff is. They're chewing yeah. the styrofoam. And, and there, I, oh. that's a difficult access point. I don't even know if I get my vacuum in there. I could vacuum them out, but I don't know that I could get them all. As long as you get the queen, right? Yeah, yeah, and she'll run in the opposite direction once I start vacuuming. I'm just trying to see how deep that is. It's about maybe six, eight inches deep. That's where they're at. Okay. Oh, you guys, why would you do that? Just trying to think what would make it easier for me to reach up in there. Yeah, I can barely get my fingers in. You want to see if this end of the hose will yeah. fit? Yeah, I mean, the definitely. end will, but there's the yeah. corrugated might not. And Who we thought they would be when we took the drywall off, and there's no bees in there. But if we go a little bit further, in between the first joist and the stone wall outside, they're in there. And it's really hard to see them in there. But there's two big clumps of them. We're gonna get them out. We'll have to vacuum them out. Hey guys, you ready to go? Okay, be careful. Yeah. had to do is cut a piece of that floor joist away 
And there they are in there. There's about a six or eight inch span and they're eating the styrofoam off so they can clear out room to draw comb. So we're gonna get them bees out with the bee vac. So I just jammed some napkins up in there right now. And I've got this bait hive for them to try to lure them in. So we're gonna seal this crack with some caulk. That way the returning foragers won't get inside the wall anymore. And we got here early enough where I think we got a good population of the forage bees. So I'm pretty happy about that. Let me see if I can show you my queen bee one more time. She's in there. She's a pretty girl. Where are you, mama? There she is. So here we are back in the garage. And there's our bees. Getting ready to enter their new home. They can't wait to get out of there. I remembered to seal up the bee vac this time so we didn't have a lot of bees flying around the car at all. In fact, there was only two. So we're gonna string up the little bit of comb that we got and then install them into their nuke. I think I'm gonna put them in um, a double five frame medium nuke. So the bees are in the vacuum. I pulled the screen out about an inch and I've got two five frame medium nukes on top with some old comb in it. So they should be going up to the queen which I have in the very top inside this uh, yellow feeder section here. So we're going to take a look right now. The queen is still in her hair clip and she's just below this screened area where these bees are so you can see all the activity that we have. There's quite a few bees. <laughs> running up and down that screen. Let me see if I can zoom in a little. <clears throat> They're in there. Look at them. It's like a mosh pit in there. So that's good. That's what we want the bees to be doing is going up towards the queen. So we'll take it back out. All right. We'll leave it kind of like that. Okay, so they're doing their thing. So even though it's July 4th, um, we still were able to, to get a cutout, which was really a swarm that was just recently cast. If I had to guess, they were probably in the cabin for about maybe two weeks tops. All the wax was pristine, white, and soft. I didn't see any eggs yet that were laid by the queen. Um, there was some honey that was just starting to get into those cells that they were, they didn't even cap it yet. So 
What's interesting about North Georgia is the area that I just went to is two hours north of where we are right here. So they've got a different climate zone going on in those mountains than what we have here. So we're already in a moderate dearth, whereas they still have a lot in bloom, um, like the sourwood, for example. That's huge up in North Georgia. So the bees that we got today are from that area. Now hopefully we won't have to feed them uh, because we're entering that moderate dearth. We'll see, we're just gonna monitor it. So I let them keep the honey that they've already gathered. It's not capped honey yet, but I'm gonna let them keep it. Hopefully they'll be able to forage enough in this area, I'm gonna monitor that, because I really don't wanna feed them, if at all possible. I want them to forage their own uh, nectar supply. So hopefully they'll be able to get enough as we enter this dirt. So that is something I'll have to monitor. If they don't find enough, I will have to feed them a little bit just to keep them going. I don't want them to starve. There's no point in doing the cutout and take them home and letting them starve, right? So I'll show you how I keep track of my hives. All I do is take a little bit of duct tape and I put it on the back of the hive. And I just put information like the date I caught the swarm or the date I did the cutout and where they were from. And I just put it right here. And I can usually monitor a colony for almost a whole year on this piece of tape. So today is July 4th. Let's zoom in here. So 7, 4, 20. Um, and it was a cutout. And it was blue. So I'm going to put Blue Ridge Mountain. Blue Ridge Mountain Cutout. All right. Um, if I want to maybe add that I do have the queen. Uh, queen is good. Queen is good. We'll put that. She's in her cage. That way I know that I got the cutout with the queen. I think they're going to do just fine. Now you might be wondering why I didn't put them into a laying hive. Well, it's because I don't have any more. Actually, I do have one. It's in the barn. It's almost finished being constructed. But I had comb that was eight frame medium comb that I saved from last year. I had it in the freezer. I took it out last night when my buddy called me. So I thawed it out and I had it all ready to go. So knowing that we're in a moderate dearth and it's really hard for them to build comb, I wanted them to have as much comb as possible. So I just took that comb that I had on medium frames and, and put it in here. You know, they're checking me out pretty close. So that's why I didn't put them in a layin's hive. I would have loved to, um, but in this case, I wanted what was best for the bees, and that was lots of built comb. I use just plastic frames in my bee vac. That way I can just rinse them off when I'm, and just put them away for storage. So they're getting in there, they're doing fine. It's a good time to do this because it's evening now and they want to settle in. And because we're in a moderate dearth, I really don't want them to have too big of an entrance. So there's one tiny entrance at the bottom that they're going in and out of. And there's one with a cork right there in the blue box. And then one tiny entrance there. That's probably about, uh, I think it's a three quarter inch or one inch diameter hole. And that's it. And that, that hole at the bottom, that is a three quarter inch hole. Right there, it's just a notch that I have in the bottom board. Yeah, I think most of the bees are in, and that's good. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, we can get rid of the vac shortly here. They're all they're all starting to jump ship here. They're all getting out of there. They're heading over. <laughs> 